word of God from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. I'm going to read from verse 15. The Bible says, Now the Philistines had stopped up the wells. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father servant had dug in the days of Abraham his father. They had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are so much mightier than we. Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of his father, which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistine had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. Also, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerah quarreled with Isaac herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called it its name Sitna, and he moved from there and dug another well, and called it and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called it Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then he went up from there to be a Sheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerah with Ahuza, one of his friends, and Pico, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you hate me and have sent me away from you? But they said, We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, since we have not touched you, and since we have done nothing to you but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning, and swore an oath with one another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, We have found water. So they called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, tonight I just want us to share something the Lord was laying in my spirit in the morning while I was praying about not giving up. And the Lord directed me to this uh, verse uh, about Isaac. If you read from chapter, I mean from verse one, you will understand that Isaac had come to stay um, with their Philistines because there was famine in the land. But in the midst of that season, well, there was still famine in the land. Something happened to Isaac. The Lord gave him a revelation that even if there is famine, do not do what the others are doing. You know, when it, there is famine, the farmers do not plant. They don't do anything because they are afraid of losing the seed. But Isaac, the Bible says, he planted. 
even while there was famine. Why? Because he was different. He was a man who had a relationship with God. He was a son of a covenant. He was a son of a promise. And because the Lord was with him, even if there was famine in the land, he planted and the Bible says that the Lord blessed him. He got a harvest, even if there was no rain, even if there was no there was a famine, he got a great harvest. And the Bible says that he, he became so blessed. He became so prosperous. He had so much possession of flocks, possession of hearts, and a great number of servants. And because of the blessing that God had blessed him, the Bible says that the Philistines envied him. You know, you, you, you go to a place, it is not your own land. You are even as you are there, see, it's like you're seeking asylum. It's like you are a refugee in a foreign land. But in that foreign land, the Lord chose to bless Isaac. And he was blessed so much to the extent that the ones who belonged to the land, the Philistines, who were dwellers and they were the rightful owners and they were the citizens of the land. They became so envious because he was so much blessed. And the Bible says that they told him, get away from us. You're becoming too great. You need to get away from us. And, but from where we have, we have read, the Bible says that they did not only chase him away, but even the wells that his father had dug, they had buried those wells and they, they had covered those wells with water. But when they cast out Isaac, the Bible says that the first thing he did was to redig the wells of his father. He's decided, yes, I've been kicked out. Yes, I have been kicked out, not because I've done anything wrong, but just because I have been blessed. It is the blessings upon my life that has made these people to kick me out. But instead of sitting down and feeling sorry for himself or instead of him, him planning revenge, you know, sometimes you either do two things when people attack you. You either feel sorry for yourself or you either get the spirit of revenge in you and you try to plan revenge. But instead of Isaac doing the two things, he decided to do something that was pro beneficial, that was profitable. He decided to redig the wells of his father, the wells that the enemy had covered up. He decided instead of just sitting here and doing nothing and feeling sorry for myself, or instead of mobilizing all the servants I have and form an army and go attack the Philistines, I will do something constructive. I am going to redig the wells of my father. And so he started redigging the wells of his father. And the first well that he redug, the Bible says that when they, he dug, the, he, he, he redug those wells, okay, the first part he, redug, he dug the wells and he still called them the names that his father had given them. And after he did that, the Bible says that his servants found a well. They dug a well and they found water running. But the herdsmen of Gera, the same people who had kicked him out, the same people now that he had come now and given them the opportunity to draw from the wells of his father. When they saw another well that is running, that had been dug by the servants of Isaac, they strove over it. They said, this is my well. And because they strove over it, Isaac did something that many of us are not able to do. He said, okay, you, you want it, you can have it. He left it. The next well that they found the water, the same people quarreled over it and said, okay, you are quarreling over this one too, you can have it. And, to, and tonight as we hear the word of the Lord, this is what the Lord was putting in my heart. That sometimes we put so much effort, we dig a well, but someone or some people strive over that well. And some of us have dug wells and people have quarreled over it. People have strove over it. But instead of just leaving it like Isaac did, we are stuck there also quarreling over it. Also, and sometimes instead of, instead of quarreling, we decide 
I'm never going to do it again. I started this. Somebody came and took the credit. I cannot do this again. I will not put an effort again. But the Bible says that even after the stroke, after the first well, he still went ahead and dug another one. And they strove over that one too. And he left them the well. And then they dug another one, which they never strove against. And he called it Rehoboth. Tonight, I was remembering a story I read a, a while ago. Some years back, I read about a conversation between a humming bird and the bee. And the humming bird was asking the bee, why do you allow men to take your honey? After you put so much effort to make honey, why do you allow men and even animals to come and take your honey? And this conversation was going like this. It's a story I read a while ago. The bee replied, yes, the people and the other animals can take away the honey, but the ability to make the honey is still with me. They may take away the honey, but I still maintain, I, I still have the ability to do it. I still have the ability to make the honey. And tonight, I just want to encourage somebody who has become so discouraged just because you start something and instead of flourishing in the thing, there's, there is strife that comes up and people want to take credit of your work. And some of us tonight have even quit. They've said, I, I don't, I'm not going to try again because I start this other people do take take over i'm not going to do it again but i have come to tell you tonight just like that bee that conversation between the hummingbird and the bee just like the bee knew that people can take away the honey but the ability to make honey is in me. I want to declare to you that it doesn't matter how many times you have started and before you can glory or before you can succeed in whatever you have started, somebody else comes and takes the credit and you feel like you're not going to start again. You're not going to do it again. I have come to tell you tonight that somebody may take over your credit. Somebody may take over your praise. Somebody may take over your idea, but the same God who has given you the idea to create wealth or to prosper in your way, that gift, his gifting and his calling are irrevocable. The ability to do it again is still within you. And tonight I feel the spirit of the Lord guiding us. Let us arise instead of being bitter, instead of being angry, arise and do it again. Oh yes, arise and try again. You see, in the first place they had covered up the wells. They didn't need the wealth. But when somebody else comes up and there is water, they want the water. Yes, I hear tonight there is somebody. You have struggled at first. When you were beginning, somebody told you it cannot be done. Somebody told you it is too hard. Somebody asked you what makes you think you can make it. Yet when you do it, they want to be part of it. Yet when you do it, they want to overtake and take over. I have come to tell you, do not not settle do not quit just like Isaac did go and dig up another well many of us are delayed many of us are late to reach our destiny because we have been stuck at the place of strife. We have been stuck at the place of strife. And that is why Paul wrote and said, take away every strife, every malice among you. Let us take away strife. Let us take away malice among us. Do not be stuck at the place of strife. You started something, somebody wants to take credit, don't remain there and strive. The same power, the same knowledge you had when you were beginning, it is still in you. The ability, the potential is in you. Rise up and dig again. Rise up and start again. Rise up and do it again. It doesn't matter even if you do it the second time and somebody else comes and take credit, you are not to be stopped. Do not remain stuck in the place of strife. Rise up and do it again. The Bible says, that the third time they could not strive with him. They could not quarrel with him. And they called that well Rehoboth. Tonight in the name of Jesus. May the Lord make room for you.
The Bible says that Rehoboth means, he's called it Rehoboth because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Tonight in the name of Jesus, as we continue to pray, I pray for somebody who has strived with you and you feel like, I I don't feel like I, I want to continue. Do not remain in the strife. We have agreed on that. Rise again and may the Lord give you Rehoboth. May you get to the place of rest. May you get to the place where you say, now the Lord has made room for us. Now we shall be fruitful in the land. May you find your Rehoboth in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that from there, after he got Rehoboth, and this is something else that the Spirit of the Lord was, was, was quickening me, that after he got Rehoboth, the Bible says he went from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. The Bible says, that after having that Rehoboth experience, he still continued having encounters with the Lord. He still continued in his worship. He still continued in his prayer life. He still continued serving the Lord. You know, there, there, there is something that happens that many of us, when we get to the place of Rehoboth, we cut communication with the one who has given us the resources. We, we disconnect ourselves from the source. When God gives us rest, Many of us, when there is nothing wrong, everything is flowing smoothly. When you are in that place of rest, many of us fail to continue seeking the Lord. Many of us disconnect ourselves from the source of our resources. But the Bible says that even after that Rehoboth experience, Isaac continued to seek the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 25 that he built an altar there. And called it, uh, called on the name of the Lord. And he pitched his tent there. Listen, listen the order of things. What did he do? The Bible says he built an altar there. He built an altar. But what did he do with his dwelling? He pitched a tent. If there is something that the Lord wants us to do. Is that when it comes to our relationship with him, it is not a pinching tent. We do not pinch the tent when it comes to the worship, our worship. It is time for us to learn the art of building the Lord an altar. Isaac built an altar there. Something permanent, something that will take time, something that involves sacrifice. He built an altar and the Bible says he pitched his tent. And if you go through Genesis and learn about Abraham, this is what Abraham used to do. Abraham would build an altar every place he went. He built an altar for the Lord and pitched his tent. Meaning when it was time to move, he would move with the tent but leave the altar built there. Even those people who came after him knew there was an altar because the altar was built. And the Lord is calling us back to the place of building altars, building an altar for the Lord. When it comes to worship, it is serious, it is sacrifice, we build an altar. But when it comes to the things of the world, when it comes to our dwelling, pinching the tent, because a tent, it is something that you can take away. Within a moment, you may move and get to another place. It is not building our dwelling place and just pitching the tent we need to do the reverse because mostly what we have been doing now when we get to Rehoboth or we build our dwelling and we just pitch a tent meaning we just go to the Lord when the need arises but it should be the other way around and the Bible says that they also dug a well there and this is what happened after he has done all that. The Bible said that Abimelech and his, and his friends and the commander of the army, they came back to look for him. They came to look for him. And they said, Isaac asked, why have you come for me since you hate me and you sent me away from you? You see this journey, some people have kicked you out. You have done them no wrong. You dig a well, they want it. You dig another one, they want it. 
And then when God gives him Rehoboth, here he is establishing the altar of the Lord and he pitches the tent. The next thing that we see is that those same people who kicked him out, those same people who treated him badly have come to look for him. And the Bible says, when the ways of a man pleases God, even his enemy, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. You know, in our times, we try so much to defend ourselves or we, we, we get into a life of competition. We want to, to have a competition and show our enemies, oh yeah, I have God on my side. But that is not the way it should be. The Bible says when the ways of a man praises God, then he makes his enemies to be at peace. I'm looking for that verse so that I give it to you. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 17, Proverbs 16 verse 17, when the man's way pleased the Lord, he maketh even his enemy to be at peace with him. And this is confirmed in this verse. He has dug the wells, they strive, he lives. He dig another one, they strive, he lives. He gets to Rehoboth, the place of rest where the Lord gives him room. But instead of just being comfortable, he gets deeper in his relationship with the Lord. He builds an altar for God and the Lord makes a covenant with him. And because his ways are pleasing the Lord, then the enemies who kicked him out have come to seek peace with him. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't that a wonderful strategy of fighting wars? Instead of being busy, exchanging words with your enemies, instead of, you know, we are living in an era that people will, will pray witchcraft prayers. you praying for somebody because they hurt you and you pray that they slide or they do what or they, they, they fall into calamity. Instead of even doing those witchcraft prayers, I call them witchcraft prayers. Because the Bible says we should even we should pray for our enemies. Huh? And we pray for those who persecute us. Instead of praying those witchcraft prayers, the Bible says, let your ways please God. And then your enemies is the one who is going to make them make peace with you. So we find the enemies of Isaac coming. And this is what they are saying. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we are going to get to this level. That those that have been fighting against you will get to the level that they come and say, we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. Can people say that? Those who have been striving with you, those that have been in conflict with you, can they get to the place of saying, we have seen that certainly the Lord is with you. So we said, let there now be an oath between us and between you and us. And let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm. Because now you are the blessed of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that we get to this level where we don't need to fight for ourselves. Let our focus be one. Let our ways please God. Tonight. As we get into prayer, I want you to pray that the Lord is going to help you to live. Do not strive. Do not strive. I know this is not easy, but this is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Stop being stuck in strife. Some of us, we have wasted a lot of time just because you had this idea and you started the idea. You shared with a couple of friends. And now they own the idea. They're taking all the credit. And some of us are stuck in that strife. Refuse to be stuck in strife. Because even if they took the finished work. Even if somebody took your idea. The, where the idea came from. Is in you. The ability. The potential is still in you. Let us refuse to be stuck. And I pray in the name of Jesus. As the Lord takes us through to Rehoboth, the place of rest, that we are not going to disconnect ourselves from the source of our resources. We will remain connected. We will give God the first priority. We will build an altar and pitch our tent. Understand tonight, build an altar and pitch the tent. When it comes to things of this world, when it comes to matters of the flesh, 
Let it just be a tent that you have pitched. But when it comes to the matters of our worship, let it be an altar you have built. You have taken time. You have taken resources. It takes planning to build an altar. And the Bible says that after we continue pleasing the Lord, it's not pleasing men. We are pleasing the Lord. The Bible says when the ways of a man pleases God, then even his enemies are at peace. Stop praying those witchcraft prayers. Huh? Those prayers I pray, they break their legs, they break their hands. Huh? Praying they see darkness. No, stop praying those witchcraft prayers. When you pray such kind of prayers, there's no difference between you and that witch. Your work is to please the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The other things shall be added. Your work, is that your, your work is to make sure that your ways are pleasing the Lord. Then when your ways please the Lord, the Bible says that even your enemies will come make peace. The enemies of Isaac came and made peace. They were the ones who had a testimony. They are the ones who are saying, we have certainly seen the Lord is with you. May it be so in your life tonight. In the name of Jesus, just take a minute before the Lord and tell the Lord to help you. If you are one of us and you're, you're stuck in the place of strife, may you receive the grace to let go. Do not remain there. Do not allow yourself to be derailed or delayed just because you're stuck in strife. Just because you still want to prove, oh yes, this was my idea. Keep on digging the wells, dig the wells, dig the wells. The potential to dig the well has not been taken away from you. Go on, rise up, dig another well. It doesn't matter how many you have dug and they strive. The Lord is surely bringing you to Rehoboth. There is a time that is coming, a season is coming that no one shall strive. And the Lord is going to give you peace. The Lord is going to give you room, room to prosper, room to become fruitful. And may you continue serving the Lord. Let us build an altar for God. Build an altar for the Lord in your house. Build an altar for the Lord in your city. Wherever you are, even in the place of work, may you build an altar there. Oh, Abraham, what, this was his way of worship. Every place he went, he built an altar, he pitched a tent. When it was time to leave, he would not demolish the altar. The altar remained and he took off his tent, went to another place. The first thing he did, build an altar. The and pitch a tent. And I pray in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is going to help us. Every place you have been. Let there be a symbol. Our sign that says surely a man or a woman of God lived or dwelled here. Because this is an altar that she or he had built and exalted for the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father we give you praise tonight. We thank you Lord for you have seen Lord. Our struggles dear Lord. Those of us who have been digging well. Oh God, and the wells have become a source of strife and conflict. Oh Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for those who are feeling discouraged, for those who are feeling weary, dear Lord, for those who feel like they cannot begin again. I declare the grace to redig again. I declare the grace to start again. I declare the grace to live and not remain in the place of strife. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I pray, King of our glory, just like you. Give Isaac Rehoboth. May you give us a room, Lord, to be fruitful, Jehovah God. May you give us Rehoboth, Lord. Tonight I pray for every listener. May we receive, O oh Lord, our Rehoboth in the name of Jesus. We thank you, King of all glory. Even as we continue to raise altars for you, Lord, as we continue to build altars, dear Father, for you, that your altar may be exalted in our lives. Wherever we are, Jehovah God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory, dear Father. Thank you for your word tonight, Lord, that it is not up to us, Lord, to pray evil against our enemies, but we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, we may focus that on our ways pleasing you, that you may 
make our enemies to be at peace with us, Lord. Even those who are our enemies, dear Lord, they may receive a testimony, dear Father, and may declare that certainly they have seen the Lord as with us. We desire, Lord, to be your presence, carriers, Lord. We desire to be carriers of your presence, dear Father. Wherever we are in the name of Jesus, we thank you because your giftings and your callings are irrevocable, my Father. Whatever you have blessed us with, dear Lord, it doesn't matter the strife that we have faced. It doesn't matter the conflicts that we have gone through. We thank you because your giftings are irrevocable. The potential you put in us, oh God, nobody can take it away, dear Father. The ability to redig the wells, Lord. We thank you because we still have it, dear Lord. We may have gone through strives and conflicts, dear Lord, but we thank you because they strove for the well. But they did not strive for the ability to redig the well. And because of that, tonight I declare that each and every one of us will continue redigging the wells in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you continue redigging the wells. Doesn't matter. Even if someone strives, even if it fails, rise up again. Remember that story I've told you about the bee? The bee told the hummingbird that even if people take away the honey, the ability to make honey is never taken away from the bee. And that's why no matter how many times the people will come and take honey, the bee continues to make honey. The same God who has given the bee the ability to make honey is the same God who has given you the ability and the ideas and the power to acquire wealth in, in whichever capacity. And the gifts and the callings of God, the talents that God has given us are irrevocable. People may strive with you, but that does not mean they, may, they have taken away your ability. Stop planning revenge. Stop remaining in the place of quarrel. Rise again. Do it again. Your Rehoboth is coming. You are going to get to the place where no one can strive with you. And those that strove with you will come to seek peace with you. Because they will say, surely the Lord is with you. May the Lord God bless you. Thank you all who have logged in tonight on our prayer line. And even those who have logged in uh, through our Facebook page. May the Lord God bless you. We meet here every Tuesday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is Glorious Power Church Prayer Line Conference every Tuesday. If you'd like you, you, to, your, your number to receive an automatic call to remind you, you can text your number and I will add it to the system so that you can get the call every Tuesday and you are going to be blessed. I only have one announcement. Uh, our Youth Summit is coming up on the 30th of November. I know you have seen the flyers uh, is out. Even the, we unveiled the speakers, the facilitators yesterday. The flyer is out. Let's continue praying for the summit. Let's continue registering, sharing with our, uh, with our networks. And even if you do not have children of that age and you'd like to sponsor the meeting, you're free to do so. Let us trust God that this year, this summit is going to be on another level. Our desire is that the, our children will continue to have a great foundation in the word of the Lord so that they may be able to overcome every challenge that they face in life. And may the Lord God bless you. Again, this is Pastor Lucy Painter of Glorious Power Church. God bless you. Let's share the words of grace and see you next Tuesday here on the prayer ring. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.